So we're here at this abandoned storage unit. We just bought this storage unit auction. And let me tell you right now, this storage unit is gonna be one of the weirdest ones that you've ever, ever seen. In order for you to understand what's so weird about it though, we're gonna have to explain the backstory. So when public storage gets ready to have an auction, unlike most other companies, they'll actually post on their website whose unit's going up for auction and you can actually see the former owner's names pretty easily. Now somebody like me, I like to take that information, do some research before the auction so I have a little bit of an idea of what their background is before we get there. Gives me a little bit of a better idea of which units I want to bid on. Usually with their name and location, I can find out quite a few things about them really quick. If they have a criminal record, where they live, even what job they have really. Everyone exists online. The weird thing about this particular unit this guy just did not exist it seemed like i looked the name up it was a common name but it was spelled very weirdly that like nobody else spells it obviously i can't give you the name i can't give their information away but it was a weird spelling that i've never seen in my life so i thought it would be easy to find but this guy did not exist no criminal background which okay a lot some people don't sometimes you just lose your unit but no nothing no history of work no history of living no history in the city the state the country is like it's like this guy just did not exist which really just kind of blew my mind i was like this is the first time this has ever happened to me i've literally looked up thousands of people over years of doing this and i'm like this has never happened to me before so i took his name i punched it into facebook no profiles i took his name i punched it into instagram no profiles finally i took the name and i punched it into twitter and we get this profile again i can't show you the information but this profile you know something weird about it it's been on twitter for what six or seven years and it has one follower and one following which really really was strange to me so i go to who he's following thinking it's probably just a bot or something the only person this dude is following is the fbi's twitter account so i was like this is okay this is strange like i like doing background and finding out information but this is just weird why do you have a seven year old twitter account that follows nobody has no gain no followers even bots over seven years and all you do is just follow the fbi that, 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 that was strange, very strange. After that, I decided to see who the one follower was since he doesn't seem to be interacting with bots like most old Twitter accounts, and it came up with a normal name. But again, this account seems like it's really old, been on Twitter forever, but it's just unused. But you know what? It has a different name. So I'm thinking, is this like an alias that he uses? Let's search this name instead of the name that was actually on the public storage's website, and there we go. We put that name in, and guess what? This guy exists, so I don't know how, how it happened. Somehow he used a fake alias in order to get his public storage account, which is really strange. However, he didn't cover up his backtrack enough because we were able to find the name through Twitter because I like playing detective. It makes it a little bit fun when you're doing this. Using his what we now knew was probably the real name, we were able to find out a person that lived in the exact city the storage unit was located. So by that spelling and stuff, I just, I, I knew that we had our guy there. So we started looking into his background and apparently about eight years ago, he was kicked off of the police force, which again was like, something really strange is going on with this guy. It was a whole legal dispute. We found a case. I can't show you the information because I can't give away the guy's identity or I can get in trouble. But there was a whole thing about him getting kicked out of the police force of the city. And it was just, again, added to the weirdness. If you get kicked out of the police force and now it appears you're trying to completely hide and fake your identity to do stuff, it just, why? Something's weird going on. And like I said, once I figured all this information out, when we got to the auction and they opened the door, really, I didn't really care. We were just going to buy the unit because it was like the creepiest backstory I've ever seen. So we kept using that name, putting it into Google and doing more research on different sites. There's sites where you can find people's criminal background. There's sites you can find their workplace. There's sites you can even find people's addresses and phone numbers. I'm not going to discuss those sites, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And we were able to find seven different lawsuits this guy's been involved in over the past six years not including the one with the police force that got him kicked off of the force so right there i'm like okay now we know why he's trying to hide his identity he's probably owes a bunch of people a bunch of money and needed to skip out and nope we're not dealing with this but my question is when you rent these units and stuff you have to show id you can't just say i'm john whatever you have to give them proof like this is my id this is me pictures match so 
Not only is this guy good at lying, he somehow also is good at creating fake IDs, and usually your credit card you pay with has to match your, match your ID, so I don't, I don't know how he's pulling this off, but it's pretty impressive, and it was enough for me to say no matter what the unit goes for or what it looks like, we're gonna buy it because I want to know the backstory. Now that you know all that, you can understand when we got here, I was gonna pretty much buy it no matter what, but when they opened it up, it was even weird. Let me show you. That's it. How do you not wonder what that is? There's three locks. They tried to save a suitcase three times. Three separate times they tried to save one single suitcase. Isn't that really weird? So I don't know if it was a good idea or not, but we paid $50 for this unit because I just had to know what was in the suitcase. Let's see. So before we get into it, what brand is the cross? Do you know? I don't even know. So we got a suitcase. Let's just start reaching in the pockets without protection of the hands. And that's not a good sign. There's nothing in the first pocket. What about this one? Uh-oh. Oh, I got something. Is that a phone? Ooh. That's a non-cracked iPhone. You know how rare it is to find an iPhone that's not busted? That very rarely happens. And the model number is a A1549 for you Apple people. Maybe you could tell me what kind of iPhone that is, but hopefully that'll pay for the unit. Hopefully. So let's see if we can get further in here because I feel more stuff. And it's packing paper, my favorite. Is that literally it? That's all that's in there. And the inside of it's actually open. You want to see what's inside? Of course. I kind of do. Let's see. It's got some weight to it, but that might be the suitcase. You ready? But, ooh, okay. Well, there's not very much, is there? Let's see what this is. See, this is weird. This is like payment. What is it called? I guess why, like when your employer gives you your pay, your pay stub, but there's four different names on each different paper. Every single paper has a different name and a completely different address, which makes it really weird. What else do we have? Ooh, three Visa prepaid gift cards, which we'll definitely check out in just a few minutes. Another phone. I think we can get this to cut on. I didn't even try to get the Apple. Hey. <laughs> it cut on. Let's see if we can get the apple to cut on. Probably not. But I'm going to try. No, this one's dead. But hopefully we might be able to find a charger somewhere. That's not cutting on. But this one is. Let's let that boot up and let's keep seeing what else we can find. Oh, another prepaid card. Why does somebody need four prepaid cards? You know why? Because they're untraceable. And we also have, look at this, an LG battery to a phone. I guess it goes to a phone like this, so when this one dies out, swap it out. There's some weird stuff going on in this unit. And literally, we got, what's that? A set of keys that I don't really know what they go to, but they're there. The key says for a GM car, so it's a car key. Let's see what's in this thing. Literally, nothing. Really? Nothing. There's nothing there. That is a brand of the suitcase, Swiss gear. That is? Yeah. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's just that for that? Yeah, there's there another, another set key of keys in there? in there. Let's see what this set of keys goes to. This one's unmarked, but another set of keys. Hmm. And look, I'm going to go to his messages. I just got this thing on. Let's look at the messages on this phone. It only has a little bit of battery left. Everything's deleted. What about contacts? Everything's deleted. Something about that just doesn't add up to me. Let's go to menus and look at the gallery. Everything's deleted. Why? Why do you have a phone with a spare battery? If you have a spare battery, you're obviously using it for something. I don't know what. And you deleted everything off of it. And then you have four cards that allow you to spend money without being traced. A little shady there. And then you have pay stubs from four different people at four different addresses. That doesn't seem right. So I figured let's try to call out on this phone and see if it's actually activated and it's just everything deleted. Because if it's activated, that's even weirder. So I'm trying to call Mama Jeebus' phone. No. Okay, that makes a little more sense. It's dead. It's not active. But 
I have a feeling somebody was using this for something that they didn't want no one else to know about, which is why they deleted everything on it and then threw it in a suit. And then, I don't know. I feel like there's something incriminating on either the iPhone or something because why would, look at this. They're, they tried to pay this off multiple times before. So they're trying to keep people away from something. I just don't know what that something is. But let's see if we got some money on these gift cards. So the weirdness of the storage unit does not stop there. We decided to put in the first gift card and check it. It did have $8 on it, which is cool. But the weird part was that it was loaded, preloaded with $220 in Tracy, California, which is a city fairly close to us. But then two days later, it was spent in Fort Worth, Texas. Why would you load a gift card and then take it with you to go spend all of it in a single purchase in another state unless you are obviously buying something you don't want traced? Nothing about this unit adds up and this just adds to it. The weirdness doesn't stop there. So guess what? I tried to enter the information for the second gift card, didn't work. So I called it and... What is the chance of the balance being six, 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 six dollars, 66 cents? What is the chance of that? Unfortunately, the website won't let me check that balance, so I can't check their purchase history on this card, but one, bought in California, spent the next day in Texas, two, six, 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 it's just getting weird. Check the last two gift cards. One of them had nothing on it. One of them had $3. So we got about $17 in gift cards, which is, that's cool, whatever. The next weird thing is I looked up the iPhone. So we typed in the IMEI number, which apparently is like Apple's way of letting you look up the phone. We looked it up, it's an iPhone 6, but the weird thing is, is it has the Where's My iPhone app enabled. I have found tons of iPhones in storage units, but I've never found one that actually had this feature enabled. So hopefully you Apple people out there can enlighten me. I don't use Apple. No one in our house uses Apple. So because that gives somebody the ability to track where I'm at because I'm in possession of the phone. Because based on the information we found on this guy, I really do not want this dude tracking me or being able to find out where I'm at. It's a little bit creepy. So somebody please enlighten me on that. All right, so that's all we got for this unit. But before we go, guys, let me know what you think is going on with this down in the comments below because I seriously have no idea what this guy could have been up to. But whatever it is, it isn't good. And don't forget, if you're new to our channel and you love these storage units, you like hearing the background stories of these crazy people, make sure you subscribe. Leave the video a like. We literally upload pretty much every single day. You'll see craziness all the time. Like the video. It helps us out a ton. And until next time, peace out.